Hello, everyone. My name is Melissa Wagner and your host for today. I'd like to welcome you to the U.S. Army webinar series, Digital Thread for Technical Authoring. And this is part four of a four-part series. So hopefully you've been enjoying the last three sessions that we had over the last few weeks. Um, like the other ones, this webinar will be about one hour in length. Um, please enter your questions into the Q&A box and we will get to them after the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the Arbitex YouTube channel. I will send an email once it is available. Also, you can forward it to your friends if you find this content very useful. And right now I'd like to go ahead and introduce Deb Williams. She's gonna kick things off for today. All right, thank you, Melissa. So again, Deb Williams, ArborTech Sales Director. I appreciate you attending the webinar today. Uh, as Melissa said, part four. So this is the digital thread for technical authoring. The focus today is on the MIL standard 40,051 for the US Army. And this one will be content delivery through IADS and augmented reality. We have three speakers today, so I'm gonna hand it off pretty fast here. Uh, Ryan Lubin is gonna talk about the delivering of the 40,051 content using ArborText Publishing Engine. And then we will have Alex Kaiser talking about extending IETEMS with augmented reality. And then Dan Middlestat will close it up with augmented reality with Vuforia uh, for technical publications. And um, before I hand it off, I just a, a real quick uh, notice, LiveWorks coming in May, 2023. Uh, the call for papers is open and we would love to hear from anyone that would be interested in talking at LiveWorks. Uh, that does close this week on Friday. Uh, registration will open uh, soon. Um, we are also planning a service symposium on the Monday and Tuesday of the week of live works. So it'll start at noon on the 15th. It'll have a keynote um, and then like a user group meeting for ArborText. And then on the 16th will be a full day of um, different things for demonstrations. And then there will be sessions in the afternoon. So we would love to have you there. Uh, live works will then um, be on the 15th through the 18th and it'll all be at the Boston Convention Center. So. Love to see you there. All right, so I will hand this off to Ryan. Thank you. All right, thanks, Deb. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I don't have any slides to share, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, jump into my uh, demonstration here. So what I'll be demonstrating today is uh, publishing 40,051 content uh, that's managed within Windchill, uh, publishing to the IADS output. So I'll go ahead and start my recording here. Uh, so what we have here is a uh, container in Windchill. And so now I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, 40,051 publication structure. So this basically uh, represents my, my publication or my manual. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, a number of different sections, and in each of those sections, I've pulled in uh, various uh, work packages. So I've got some introductory uh, matter, general information, operators instructions, troubleshooting, maintenance, um, Ripstool, and then uh, some supporting information work packages. So you can see here are all of the uh, work packages that have been pulled into this uh, particular pub. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, publish to my IADS output. So here I have the, the option to publish to either PDF or, out, or IADS. I'm going to publish to IADS and submit my publish job. Uh, from here, I can uh, go to my representations tab and then just I can, there's a monitor that I can use to uh, monitor the progress of this, this publishing job. So depending on how large the publication is, it can it can take several minutes. Uh, but here you can see our publishing job has completed successfully. And now if I refresh this page, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that I have uh, my IADS uh, output is associated with this publication structure now. 
Uh, so the system is keeping track of each of those publishes. So you can see there's different versions of my IADS uh, output. So I've got A1 through three. So I'm gonna go to the latest, uh, latest published output and download the content. So I'm downloading the, uh, the output to my uh, local machine. And so you can hear, see here, we've got a, a zip. I'm gonna go ahead and extract the contents of that zip file. And so if I open up the, the unzipped contents, Now you can see, or now I'm gonna open up the IADS viewer and I'm gonna open up that, that same bundle that I just uh, downloaded from Windchill. So here you can see it's that same, same folder. Just point to my uh, IADS dataset file and so now you can see it's opened up my, my publication. And if I expand the sections, you can see it has each of those same work packages that we included in the publication uh, structure on the windshield side. Uh, so if I go into some of these uh, different work packages, um, you can see here we have just the uh, equipment description um, just a couple things. Uh, if, so if I hover over it, you can see here's a here's a graphic uh, with a legend underneath it. Um, if I uh, select any of the items from the legend, you can see that they're highlighted in the uh, illustration above. Uh, I should also point out that uh, so this this work package was authored in, in Arbor Text. Uh, it's been managed on the windshield side, uh, and then this illustration was actually generated uh, from upstream CAD data. Um, and then illustrated using Crew Illustrate and then exported to an SVG file format, which is what you see here. Um, another thing to point out um, in this one, you can see, or actually uh, item three um, was not correct. So we'll go back and make a change to that here shortly. Um, here's another uh, work package. So we have our uh, description and use. And again, same thing, it's, it's another illustration that was illustrated using Creo Illustrate. Uh, you can see we have a couple other work packages. So we've got some, some maintenance work packages. Again, if you uh, hover over the any illustrations in the work package, you can see that in the viewer. And then I can link to uh, any other work packages. So this should look pretty familiar to anybody that's you know currently publishing to IADS. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to close out uh, close out IADS and go back to the windshield side, and I'm going to make some changes to my my publication structure, as well as some of the content uh, in the publication structure. So if we go back to our publication structure, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to edit one of the work packages that were already included in our, in our publication structure. So the uh, equipment description. I'm going to uh, go ahead and open that up in Arbor Text Editor. So here you can see that same uh, work package that we were looking at on the IAD side. Uh, now it's opened in an Arbor Text Editor. I'll go ahead and uh, check it out. And then now I'm gonna come down here to my legend and this item three uh, that was previously labeled incorrectly. I'm going to give it the uh, correct label here. So this should be my uh, four and a half inch suction hose. So I'll go ahead and make that change. And then, uh, 
at this point, I will check my work package back into Windchill. All right, so now that I've updated my content, I'll go back to my publication structure and I'm going to include uh, two additional work packages. So the first one I will add, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a uh, maintenance work package so I can navigate uh, from my information structure, locate the maintenance work package that I wanna pull into my publication and just drag it over and add that to my publication. Go ahead and check my maintenance section back in. And then the last thing I'll add is uh, I'm going to add a new ripstall. And this ripstall uh, is actually a uh, windchill parts list that was actually authored in windchill uh, using upstream uh, CAD and part data. So I'll just go ahead and check this section back in first. And then I'll just uh, real quick, we can actually gotta check in the uh, publication structure as well. And now just to demonstrate uh, that this actually is a parts list, we'll go ahead and just take a look at that parts list real quick. So here you can see this is a uh, 40,051 parts list. Once it loads, you'll be able to see, uh, so it's associated with upstream uh, part data and, and CAD data that we've used to build out our parts list and uh, generate our illustrations. So this is the uh, ripstall that I've actually pulled into our publication. So now going back to our, our publication structure one more time. Uh, so again, I'll just expand these sections and you can see we've got uh, the same work packages with the addition of our, our new maintenance work package and our, our new ripstall. And at this point, we're ready to go ahead and uh, generate a new IADS uh, bundle. So go ahead and publish again to the IADS output. Again, we'll uh, open up the monitor and see that the publishing job is, is executing. All right, and now you can see our publishing job was successful. So again, we can go uh, back to our publication structure, refresh this page here. And now you can see uh, if we scroll down a little bit, uh, so we have our, our IADS output that has been generated. Now we're at version 8.4. So again, the system is keeping track of each of these, these these versions and we can go ahead and download our content. So here's the zip file I just downloaded. And now if I go ahead and reopen the IADS viewer, Okay, so now it's opening that same publication. And if we go to our general information and our equipment description work package and open up that, uh, that figure, we can see 
that our legend has been updated and now our item three is the uh, four and a half inch suction hose like we like we changed it to on the Arbor Tech side. And if we expand the maintenance section, uh, you can see we have our newly added work package. So we have that uh, pump drive and PTO work package. And then finally, if we expand our ripstool section, now you can see we have our uh, windshield parts list generated uh, ripstool here. So here's our, our parts list. Uh, you can see here is the figure associated with that parts list, which was uh, again generated using upstream CAD information uh, and then illustrated using Creole Illustrate. So that concludes the uh, IADS publishing portion of the demo. I'll go ahead and turn uh, turn it over. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I'm gonna share my screen here. And um, if someone can just please confirm when you see it and we'll get going. All right, here's my, my screen showing. Look good, Alex. Uh... Awesome. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> Thank you, Ryan. So uh, before we proceed to reviewing a little bit um, in the following section, how augmented reality can be used to visualize and to engage and to help uh, basically the end user see information, technical publications, uh, relevant content in a more uh, visual immersive way, helps them understand where they are, what they need to do at every given uh, minute, of course, and uh, collect their feedback and execution data. I wanted to give a, a brief overview of what is the Vuforia suite or the Vuforia package that PTC has to offer and um, give some examples about customers that actually use that today and uh, get real value out of the Vuforia suite of products. So if we take it just a, a, another step back, uh, what, what is AR good for? Or what does the role of AR in a digital threat? Augmented reality on its very basis is supposed to allow various devices, whether it's a tablet like you see in the picture here, phones, headsets, computers, and so on, to map the 3D world, map the physical world around us in a 3D fashion, understand it, meaning where's the floor, where is the model, where is an object, where am I located, and then overlay digital information on that view in a way that basically makes sense. You walk around something, it stays in the same place as if you just dropped it on the floor. You want to show work instructions on the physical object, they will show on the physical object. So the role of AR in a digital thread when we are doing um, this kind of work is to really recognize the space, guide us to where various points of interest, parts, assemblies, tools, and so on, capture the user feedback so it can be used for tracking performance, tracking data, performing inspections, and various other use cases. And of course, help us visualize and virtualize the physical space. And how do we do it in, in Vuforia? We have various ways on, of actually integrating with the physical environment by showing information in the context and, and in a way that, like I mentioned, makes sense. Uh, we used to have more traditional methods of uh, QR codes and, and different uh, printed out icons and anchors like that. That's kind of the oldest and the most um, reliable back in the day technology. But with the evolution of the Vuforia suite and the tools and capabilities, uh, we started also providing other more advanced ways of placing digital data in physical space. For example, on the left side here, um, meaning spare on the table and drop this information there. Very useful for virtual experiences, design reviews, sharing, viewing content when you're not at the place of execution where you actually want to preview that, see how it looks like, do some, some dry runs before you go, get more familiar. It's ideal, it works on large uh, spaces. You can drop 
a full-sized physical product on the floor, walk around it as if it's right there in front of you. The other slightly more advanced method is to actually place it on the object. By knowing the 3D geometry of a physical object, we can train our augmented reality experience or application to look for it in physical space and then show the digital content actually overlaid on top of that, again, in a way that makes sense. Parts are showing where they're supposed to be. Different tools and components, work instructions are flying in, flying out exactly where they're supposed to be done. And of course, we can also use the 3D geometry of the physical product to obstruct digital data so the things that show behind it, in front of it, will actually show like that in the digital view as well. So it's a more advanced way of constantly looking at a physical object wherever we are and showing the relevant data there. When we talk about larger physical scale environments, well, we can't really rely on a spot on the floor, a physical anchor, or even a product. We want to be able to move freely around a large space, a hangar, a depot, a shop floor, and constantly show digital data in a very accurate way. So we also support the ability to track or to map the environment of a scan space. If we take a scan made by simpler devices, like a, an iPad with a LiDAR tracker, or if we have prof more professional cameras that give us 3D mappings of, of environments, like this Matterport example you see here, we are able to constantly be re-snapping our experience to the physical space in a way that does not reduce our accuracy as we get away from the origin point. That allows us to take incredibly large spaces, 10,000 square meters and upwards of 400,000 square meters to a way that constantly keeps us accurate and in the scope of what we need to do. And that allows us to really scale and um, show and visualize work instructions in every relevant scenario in the industrial space. But what is in the Viforia product portfolio? We can basically um, merge our tools into two main boxes. One box that we call the frontline offerings are tools that are ready to go, easy to deploy. They are cloud-hosted SaaS products. They're constantly up to date, constantly bringing new functionalities and features to users without the need to maintain a very high complexity set of environments, servers, deployments, um, app releases, things like that are, are out of the box here completely. We are giving those products ready to go, constantly keeping them up to date with relevant security upgrades and, and architectures and scalability, and of course, uptime and, and global accessibility. These tools include Viforia Chalk, that's a tool here on the left. That's a tool for remote assistance. Usually around 2 a.m., something happens that we haven't seen before. And the person that's in front of what's happening uh, needs some assistance. That frontline worker, whether it's a service technician, uh, an assembly worker, someone that needs to do some work um, is, is a little bit stuck. They can pick up their phone, tablet, wearable headset, call an expert or a group of experts, subject matter experts. Everyone is remote, whether at home, different part of the, of the facility or different continent. They can support them immediately by seeing what they're seeing, but also scribbling on the screen, whether it's through a phone or a tablet with their finger or with a, a mouse on their computer screen. And those annotations will stay stuck in 3D space as if someone reached through the device and scribbled there. It's a very high accuracy way to deliver um, content instructions and support and really help close the, those knowledge gaps. The other two tools, before Expert Capture and before Instruct, are part of a package that we call Viforia Work Instructions. They help us scale, document, and properly visualize tacit knowledge. People have a lot of knowledge in their heads. Not everything is properly sometimes documented. Not everything is is understandable in a, in a visual way based on traditional methods. So with before expert capture, for example, we introduced a way to capture an expert's knowledge from their point of view in a step-by-step -step fashion with lots of various multimedia elements like videos and audio narration and pictures as milestones and so on to deliver that knowledge to the next person in a way that makes sense, in a way that's more visual, in the way that's interactive, capture their feedback, capture the progress, and keep a close loop on exactly how this content is being used. Supports various devices, headsets, and mobile devices, phones, tablets, computer screens, Word document exports, and so on. Before Instruct expands this capability of export capture of this work instructions package with the ability to also include 3D models. We're also able to show you not only with export capture what needs to be done and how it needs to be done, 
but with instruct, we can also show you where it needs to be done on the physical product. Select parts, subassemblies, random um, spots on the geometry and so on. We're able to do that. And of course, introduce additional methods of automation like AI assisted uh, step checking and, and visual inspections and so on. So all this package allows the frontline workers to get started right away with high accurate, highly accurate production ready solutions. When we talk about more complex use cases, things that are not standard out of the box, or we need to expand the, the uh, basic capabilities of all these other solutions, we also have the creators package. The creators package allows us to introduce two additional tools, two platforms for our customers that help them create augmented reality solutions uh, quickly in a, in a very powerful way. On the top, on the very right side, we have Euphoria Engine. Engine is the software development kit that allows you to build your application from scratch with full flexibility. It will do exactly what you want it to do. And with Engine, you will add the ability to have augmented reality capabilities, visualization, 3D tracking, object location, and so on. Euphoria Studio is a bit of a unique animal here in, in the slide because it's, at least in my personal opinion, it's a healthy balance between these two boxes. Euphoria Studio allows us a lot of flexibility in creating our augmented reality experience, in tailoring exactly how the business flow is going to go, in introducing live IoT data, in integrating with external systems. I would say this is the main tool before a studio to integrate with, with like we're discussing uh, throughout this entire webinar series, to get the data out of there, to visualize it to the user, to help us maintain the digital thread and extend it into augmented reality. If we have technical publications that have already been created and authored, and, and let's say Cray Illustrate animations, and 3D models and 2D guides and aids before a studio can reach in and grab them all without the need to reauthor them, recreate them all over again. However, before a studio has a lot of out of the box tools that don't require us to go and spend all that effort in actually creating them. For example, the application that actually sits on the mobile device, phone, tablet, HoloLens, Realware and other supported devices, that standard application provided by PTC. That means that when there's a new version of the operating system, some critical bug that needs to be that needs to be addressed, you don't need to go and reauthor the code, re-release it with Apple or Google or Microsoft. You can actually just use the latest version of Euphoria View, that's the viewing application, put it in the device. So with Studio, you're able to focus all of your time and effort on creating that augmented reality experience to tailor the content, proper business flow, and then release that in a rapid way to the community of users. So everything around the non-straightforward efforts like the viewing application, the hosting environment, and so on is provided by PTC. Before a studio and engine, unlike the uh, frontline suite, also are available on premises. Some of our customers do not have the ability today or the permissions to go SaaS, to go cloud. Uh, both before a studio and engine can be deployed in hosted environments as well as on premises behind the firewall environment. So um, altogether, the Vifora suite gives us a lot of, of abilities and strengths of augmented reality in various use cases uh, that are around creation, visualization, and execution of work instructions, of remote assistance, of immersive 2D, 3D experiences. There's a lot more of information about these tools and what they can do, a lot of uh, videos and demonstrations, and most importantly, in my view, the, uh, the case studies that we have. So when we're going to send out the uh, presentation after today, uh, please click on these links. You will get lots and lots of useful links and, and examples to our customers and what they've done. Just to talk about a few, um, the US Air Force uh, needed a more immersive three-dimensional way to have training. They've used before a studio, that's our 2D, 3D IoT platform that can build very immersive augmented reality experiences on various types of devices and use that in a way that's visual, that's clean, clear, and, and, and knowledge. And that showed to be very useful and very productive in, in that sense. Another example, um, also from the US Air Force, they used our Expo Capture solution uh, also to improve training, but mostly on delivering this tacit knowledge, the expert knowledge 
data and, and not data, but experience that's been collected in people's heads in a very uh, production ready way. So they've used before expert capture to document procedures from the point of view of the expert, quickly author them and reach them with some additional content, deliver them to the trainees. And they actually I had a, a quick uh, research done on this and they've improved training capability by 20%. That, that's pretty major. A different customer of ours, Suncor out of Canada, um, they process energy uh, from oils and so on. And what they've done here is that they've done a study mm -hmm. of multiple people using traditional methods of paper-based instructions and also using uh, the more immersive augmented reality tools like expert capture. They found two interesting things here. One is that with traditional methods, the results were scattered all over the map. So people did the same procedure and some of them did it quicker, some of them did it slower, some of them did it with more mistakes and they had to either raise their hand, ask for help or go forward a couple of steps just to find out they need to go back and repair something. And some of them did it more accurately on the first or second try. So this scattering of, of these results is usually more troubling than just reduced performance. When they used the more immersive, the more visual 2D, 3D elements of a 4 expert capture and other of our tools, they managed to see that the results are more predictable. More people did the same procedure quicker and with less errors. They've done successful steps almost all the time. They've done those steps quickly. So they've improved both time to resolve an issue or to complete a, a work instruction and also predictability on how well the result will be. This for them was a, a major move forward in how they can scale knowledge, scale procedures, get people to be independent more quickly and, and in a way that's more predictable and repeatable. So that was a, a great study coming out of Suncor. How then, uh, one of our heavy equipment customers, they've been using various tools from PTC, both on the AR uh, suite and beyond. One specific example that, that come, came out of this is that they've used Vifuria Chalk, that's the remote assistance tool, to provide their customers and their technicians on site with support from subject matter experts. Some of Howden's experience is just 170 year old knowledge that's been built into these machines. It's almost impossible to document that in a manual that's gonna be a quick reference. And it's the, the problem becomes even more severe when you move away from the Howden uh, base of expertise as in, and into the field technician, or of course, even to the customer. They wanted to quickly get in touch with a subject matter expert or a group of subject matter experts, show them the problem, show what's, what's seen on the screen, show how the machine is going, let them hear some noises and immediately provide at least initial support. In this case, every Howden customer's downtime is millions and millions of dollars and just saving a couple of minutes is, is a huge leap for Howden and their customers. So with that, I'm going to transition back to Dan to provide us more specific examples of how augmented reality can be used to deliver technical publications and work instructions. Um, again, we will send out this presentation um, you can click on these links to get a lot more information about Vuforia and all the other PTC offerings. And of course, a page about lots and lots of good case studies on various fields and verticals of how our customers are actually getting value out of augmented reality and Vuforia every single day. So with that, um, Dan, back to you. Thanks, Alex. Let's see if I can share my screen. All right. So... Let's see, so Alex introduced to PTC's AR portfolio, uh, where AR can bring digital technology to augment the physical world of the frontline worker. So my specific AR example that I'd like to walk through is one way of extending uh, tech manual data, in this case. Uh, hey Dan, that's Melissa. I, I, we still don't see your screen yet. Were you sharing? Oh, my apologies. Yeah. There we go, okay. Thank you. All right, so I was I was explaining, uh, so the example I'm gonna walk through is extending a tech manual, in this case, uh, deployed via IADS uh, to the physical world with hands-free technology, you know, like the HoloLens or devices as commonplace as your cell phone. So uh, extending IADS to AR, uh, PTC's Vuforia Studio product was used for authoring the AR experience. Uh, an AR template was created on the left, it can be deployed to support many product support scenarios. 
In our example, the template is populated with graphical and task data based on the IADS task identified by scanning a QR code, or it could be by clicking a simple hyperlink embedded in the IADS manual. And the resulting AR experience can be placed in the physical world, uh, like Alex has been illustrating, or, or even uh, augmenting the physical asset. So content on the left-hand side uh, of the diagram, like 3D models, manual data, task data, animations, pictures, other content can all be pulled in dynamically to support that task. And the AR experience can be self-contained or it can leverage real-time data uh, uh, shown at the bottom uh, from back-end systems, perhaps uh, like Windchill or IADS or an ERP system displaying you know, task information or part availability, uh, resource training um, or training information, competencies, or many other purposes that might be relevant in a support context. So as mentioned uh, on the right, the AR app or client can be consumed on a variety of platforms, uh, mobile devices like your cell phone or 2D and 3D eyewear uh, like the HoloLens. So for illustrative purposes, uh, I have a simple um, IADS data set. It's an aircraft uh, that we'll be focused on, uh, and we're gonna be looking at this RAM air turbine uh, subsystem. So, um, like Ryan has been showing and, and uh, uh, Scott as well, the, the associated illustrations and animations I'll, I'll be showing have been generated from 3D models using Creo Illustrate and leveraging the digital thread from the models through the illustrations uh, and then the management of the manual inside of Winchell. Uh, Creo Illustrate and Winchell have been discussed you know, earlier and again today. Uh, so there's other recorded webinars which you can review if interested. Um, and the same illustrations and animations uh, we'll be reusing in the context of augmented reality, making augmented reality part of that digital thread, you know, streamlining the creation process and accelerating the use of that data in multiple ways. So here I have an iPhone on the left of IADS. Uh, it could be easily be a whole lens and I'll click on a link or in this case, scan a QR code uh, to um, uh, launch the AR uh, app experience uh, extending the maintainer or the operator's experience beyond the item uh, into a, a, an AR experience overlaid on the physical world. So it pulls in the 3D models and instructions appropriate to the context, uh, overlaying it on this generatively designed bracket I have mounted on a board. Uh, it uses the maintenance task data and 3D models and animations to guide or train the user on the task. Uh, like mentioned, it could be used uh, in the field or in a smart connected depot, uh, connected to assets uh, if appropriate. And on completion of the work, the maintainer or the operator can record completion status, uh, inspection events, you know, escalate for help if needed, capture a photo or a note, and uh, move on quickly, uh, have, having correctly and efficiently followed the procedure and capturing uh, critical event data that could ultimately be used for closed loop uh, process improvement. So this was just uh, one kind of quick example of illustrating how I, uh, uh, an item like IADS uh, could be extended to an AR context. Uh, and I'd like to turn it over to uh, Victor or Deb for any uh, thoughts.